Hey everybody, it's Chris Aiken from the Classic Metal Show and the Aftershocks Podcast. And I know you want to see this next episode, but right before we do it, just want to remind you that if you have an Amazon device, whether it's a TV or a Fire Stick or Fire Cube or whatever it would be, a Fire Box if you're old school, uh, make sure you add the CMSPN to it. Just look up CMS Podcast Network on your Amazon device add the channel and you will get every episode of all four shows for free right there on your TV. Make us part of your TV viewing every single day and night. All right. Uh, it's the CMS podcast network, cmspn.com. And it is now on Amazon. So get it. All right. All right. Here's the episode you came to see. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right. Hello, everyone, and happy Veterans Day to you. It is Bob Melvanian, your host of the Inside Metal. TV show right here on T Radio V, and our guest tonight is not here yet, but uh, we got Don Dawkins going to be coming in any minute now. Stuck in LA traffic, uh, as you know, at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday in LA, uh, traffic is pretty heavy. So uh, Don's going to be joining us in a few minutes, and uh, want to let you know we got some great things going on with the Inside Metal movie. We are hitting theaters uh, starting today. Theaters will start in. Uh, throughout Europe and Austria and a couple other countries, and it will be hitting uh, North Hollywood tomorrow, Wednesday the 11th. Is that right? Or is today the 11th? Wednesday the 12th and uh, in Pasadena. Here's the tour dates right now. He's scrolling down. He's got some Arizona dates. Uh, there's the California dates. And we're going all the way through pretty much the month of November. And uh, as I mentioned, this will be the first uh, uh, half. It's, a, it's, it's a quite a long movie. So this will be the edited version of the uh, Pioneers at L.A. Hard Rock and Metal, the 90-minute version. So uh, you can definitely check it out. If you missed the tour dates there, you could just go to uh, MetalRockFilms.com. That'll give you all the uh, tour dates uh, on the Inside Metal movie, again, uh, playing at theaters, um, hopefully in your area. And if it's not, we're going to get it out on DVD, probably, uh, hopefully um, around the first of the new year. And uh, it should be on all the digital channels, the Netflix and all that kind of stuff. So why don't we uh, do the uh, trailer for the movie before Don gets here? will give you a little preview of the Inside Metal, Pioneers of L.A. Hard Rock. There was no hip hop, there were no boy bands, there was no punk, there was nothing. It was rock and roll. You could sense when you went to Hollywood that it was, um, felt like there was more, um, girls. You know, the Rainbow, you know, Richie Blackmore, Jimmy Page, Led Zeppelin. Parties were like a phenomenon back then. Things started happening so quickly, we were like, kind of like, Thousands of kids would show up. But L.A. was was doing it. People underestimate the power of the 70s influence. So that whole scene, you know, in L.A. was 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 the scene. <laughs> the meddlers against the punkers. He gave him some blow and a couple of and some cocktails, and all of a sudden, you know, it was game on. Helicopter shine the light down on everybody. <laughs> Give a young band like that, you know, a couple million dollars. They are going to get fucked up. It seemed like we had the world by the balls. And we did. The LA scene was huge. God, it was wild. All right, there you go. That's the trailer for our first title of the Inside Metal series. Again, the pioneers of L.A. hard rock and metal, and that'll be hitting the theaters starting tomorrow. Go to MetalRockFilms.com. That'll give you all the theater dates. 
And uh, again, coming out on DVD, the first of the new year. This is, as I said, the first title of the three of the L.A. Uh, metal series. The second one will be called, there's the poster for it, Pioneers of L.A. Hard Rock and Metal, which is really between like 75 to 81, basically the uh, formation of the hard rock and metal years in L.A., the Van Halen era, as, as people say. The second one will be the L.A. Metal Scene Explodes. That's going to be our second title coming out. That'll cover roughly around... Uh, It'll be like the follow-up from uh, 82 to about 86. And the third one will be uh, the rise of L.A. thrash metal. And that's going to give props to all the uh, great thrash and uh, speed metal bands, as it was called speed metal back in the 80s, uh, from Los Angeles. That really didn't get their due because, uh, you know, San Francisco kind of took the throne on thrash metal. And L.A. was always known more for the glamier hair metal bands. But uh, a lot of great uh, thrash and uh power metal and uh, you know speed metal bands from the LA area that we're going to get into. So we're going to take a quick break. Hopefully by the time we get back, Mr. Don Dockin will be here. So uh, T-Radio V, Inside Metal. Hey, I'm Dean Kane and you are watching T-Radio V. I'm watching it too. Right now. Seriously. <laughs> I'm Debbie Kay, professional poker player and host of the new poker show, The Flop, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on T Radio V. Come play with me and dive into the world of poker, where each week I'll discuss the lives of grinders and nits with local rounders and celebrity guests. Who knows? I may even shuffle a scandal or two. If you want to know what's happening on the felt and learn a tip or two from the pros, I'll be dealing it to you weekly. So tune in to T-Radio V every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Are you ready to get your grind on? T-Radio V. Radio and TV. Hello, I am food and travel guru Mark DiCarlo. And I'm Yenny Alvarez, a traveling diva. And we're doing a new show right here on T-Radio V called A Fork on the Road. I've been over 500 cities in America and elsewhere, and I know where to stay, what to eat, and what to do for fun when you're there. And so does she, because yeah, she's the because, traveling diva. Yeah, traveling diva, not traveling hobo. Right, what's the first thing people ask you every time you come back from a trip? Food. Where'd what'd you, you eat? What'd you eat? Was it good? Was it bad? Where'd you stay? How much did you spend? We have all the answers because we know people everywhere. Every deals. week we'll be interviewing a different chef, a different celebrity, a different musician, people that travel for a living and who know all the back roads. Authentic roads. travel, authentic food, great places to go, um, festivals. I love festivals. We That's love so festivals. So every Tuesday at 4. And we're going to be bringing it all to you each week, like she said, Tuesdays, Tuesdays at, at 4. So for food, fun, and travel, you come right back here to us. Mark DiCarlo. And I'm Yenny Alvarez. And we'll see you. On a fork on the road. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, we are back. The Inside Metal Show on T Radio V, and my guest has arrived, Mr. Don Dawkins. Hello. How you doing, Don? I made it. Got caught in the LA traffic, huh? Uh, it's the wrong time of day to be doing anything when you live at the beach. I mean, the nearest freeway is at least 40 minutes to get on a freeway. Then you sit there for a couple of days. Yeah, I, dude, I know how it is. They give me the best time, 3 o'clock on a, on a Tuesday afternoon. You got to take a lunchbox when you come into Hollywood. <laughs> I thought you were going to hit the rainbow. Grab some chicken soup. I was going to, but as you see, I got the black all over my fingers. Ah. I was uh, doing some plumbing, a little ABS and some PVC. And Look at Don. If you guys need a plumber, call yeah. Don Dockett. But the thing is, yeah, yeah, the lesson about plumbing is if you're doing plumbing, put gloves on. This shit won't come off for a week. Ah, all right. Well, that, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I got a lot of projects going on. Yeah, I built a couple of houses. I'm, I'm putting pumps in my koi ponds, and I'm trimming trees, and... It's a lot of work. It's 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 six o'clock in the morning every morning, and you got to get up at the sunrise and meditate, and right. you know, with, with uh, Lady E, and then we start our day and a little coffee, and then we hit we hit the yard. Man, I'm up in the trees. We have like 40 trees that are over 100 years old. Wow. And I have to go up there. We have to trim them, and we're cutting them, and I don't know. It's just it's just a continuous project. And then I try to take a break, you know, and take a nap. I love power naps, man. And then you know we have dinner, and then 
she hits the sack about nine. I go in the studio down the basement and hit the studio and it's just the start. Life of a rock and, and roller, right there, man. I have to, you know, I do my music because it's it's an outlet. Mm. But there's something about I don't know. There's something about like digging mud and planting and trimming trees. It's very it's a very peaceful thing to do. Absolutely. We're building like a uh, beautiful area too. Oh man, it's so nice down there in the Palisades. Mm. You know, you're right. You know, five minutes from the ocean. And you right. have like several acres of land, and there's no neighbors and it's just rivers running down the mountain and you know our fish and it's just very peaceful very nice i like it's a good place to record oh absolutely and you got your own studio right yeah we just you know i used to have a big studio in redondo for years and years and years was that total access no it was next to total access i did a lot of albums at total access with win davis but then i decided you know i'm spending a lot of money here when no offense but there was a building next door like 100 yards away Mm -hmm. and i just went in there and spent a couple hundred grand and built a studio and did two docking albums, a lot of band, a lot of punk bands worked there. Pennywise right. and uh, Great White and uh, their rock band, and just tons of bands would come in. So I'd be on tour, and I'd just say, "Here's the keys, boys," because mm-hmm. I, I was just trying to pay it forward. Yeah, you know, because a lot of bands they don't have a budget. Sure. When sure. Pennywise came, they go, "Hey, we have a ten thousand dollar budget." I'm like, "Wow, I, I had a million dollar budget, <laughs> <laughs> and we spent all of it." Yeah. They go, ten grand? You want to cut it? But they go, but, we're, we're, but we do everything live. They're a punk band. Right, sure. So Pennywise would come in, and they just throw their ten grand down to keep my engineers busy, paid the rent, and it paid the electricity. And I'd say, have fun. Don't destroy the place. Don't pee on the console. And mm-hmm. Fletcher go, I can't pee on the console. I go, Fletcher, you can't pee on the console, man. <laughs> Sorry. You can't pee anywhere but in the toilet. They broke a lot of toilets for some reason, that band. Pennywise. Oh, oh Pennywise, man. Those guys, they were like, they're just rough on toilets. But you know, a lot but you're of those a plumber, so you could always fix it. That's, that's true, I, and I did plenty of that. But there you know, you um, so you know, I sold the studio because you know the, the the world's changed. You know, tape machines are gone, sure. record companies are gone. People can buy a Mac Pro this big, buy a Pro Tools, mm. go in your bedroom, and make a record. It's a whole new world, man. It's you've a done whole new a world lot world. of production. I know you've done a lot of you know the. Uh, the contemporaries of the 80s and early 90s XYZ and stuff. You've yeah. also worked with St. Vitus. You produced one of their yeah, albums. Yeah, St. Vitus, because the, the drummer, God rest his soul, Armando Acosta, yeah. uh, I went to high school with him. Mm. So I knew Armando since I was in Venice High School, and uh, and it was funny because he had his cool lowrider. You know, I can't mm. remember what it was. I think it was an Oldsmobile or something. But I only, and I had a chopper. But, right. you know, choppers ain't real good for taking on dates. Right. I mean, I, that was the only thing I could afford. I had this old pan head, you know, tr- full-blown, rigid, sure. long front end, suicide ship. And he loved my bike, and I'd want to go on a date, and I'd say, uh, you give me, I'll give you the pan head for the night. You give me your lowrider. And so we went through high school together, and then years later he joined the St. Vitus. So I said, dude, come in, and maybe we should step it up a little bit of a notch, you know. They were a trippy. They're, they made they made Black Sabbath look like speed yeah, I, rock. And they were I so like their doom, early doom, doom, <laughs> blah, doom, 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 da, da, da. And he passed away a couple of years ago, which is sad. Yeah. That was sad. But so he came in. I did St. Vitus, and I tried to help him out, and mm. it wasn't really my forte. And I said, well, I'll just try to get you know good sounds for you, and mm. get you on the just try to make it sound a little more uh, you know high end. Right. Not that it was conducive to their music but they wanted a more like yeah. a super high quality album that was a good album it was a good album yeah. so I, I produced great and then but from that from xyz to a lot of english bands i didn't know how many bands i produced till i saw my quote unquote discography and somebody put on the internet and i was like who <laughs> who did i produce who I, I don't remember that a couple bands had a number of top 10 hits in england and right. i discovered great white yeah you did their first uh, ep right ep yeah. i found him because uh, i knew uh, mark kendall from Zizix, oh, wow. as, you, as, back, as sure. Jack says right. in, in your movie. Mm. And uh, he, and then he said, oh, I'm gonna join this band. I got this guy named Jack. And so I just said, I went out to Orange County and as we all used to do, you put the stinky carpet on the walls of the garage and it smelled like yeah. cat pee. And I checked him out and I said, you know, I got a guy named Michael Wagner mm. before he turned into the Michael Wagner sure. of doing everybody from Metallica to Poison to Motley Crue. I mean, he did everybody. To Janet Jackson. Yeah. Oh yeah, Michael oh, Ozzy. Ozzy the, sure. One of his greatest albums. You know, no more, uh, no more tears. And mm-hmm. so I said, Michael and I, we need money. We're broke. So I tell you what, you give us seventy five hundred bucks, and we'll cut the album for like four grand. I'll give a couple grand to Michael, a couple grand to me. We can pay our rent for four months because our rent was like eight hundred bucks a month. And Michael's living on the couch, and so we did a great white and got him their start, and that was it. 
Well, talk about the start. Talk about your start uh, with, with uh, Doc, and then we're going to go back to Airborne, which is covered extensively in this movie, Pioneers of L.A., yeah. Hard Rock and Metal. Yeah. You took a trip to Germany pretty early on during the whole punk era when it hit hard in the L.A. scene in the early 80s, and you hooked up with Dieter Dirks and, of course, Michael Wagner, and right. uh, you did, uh, a lot of people don't know, you did a little bit of work on the Scorpions Black yeah, album. Yeah, the backup uh, vocals. I on sang there. the high notes right. because, you know, Klaus had had, uh, like, vocal surgery, surgery, had polyps. Yeah. A lot of vocal singers have had, I've had surgery in my left vocal cord. Mm. And you get polyps. I mean, it's like anything you use, a muscle, and you sing, you know, thousands of shows, I mean, you're going to wear it out. Pavarotti, I mean, he, he couldn't, he was... He was a tenor, and, and you know, late in his life, he had to drop it down you know, because even though he was like, no flowers in the room, I want any pollen, mm. you know, he didn't drink, he warmed up for two hours, and even Pavarotti said, you know, his voice started to, you know, we talked real high, and we talked right. like this when we're young, and then, yeah. then we get the squeak, you know, <laughs> if we're 14, and, and then you have like your... Peter Brady and the Brady Bunch. Exactly, and then you have your sweet, <laughs> your sweet days mm. of 23 to 33 where your voice is right in the zone you know and you have a you know a lot of range mm. but it's wear and tear and so so when i met dieter he saw me at the whiskey mm. and said you know he said I, I don't like your band but i said oh well well he goes but i like your voice i like the way you play guitar but you like to go to germany and do some background vocals and i went germany i've never been out of the country right i don't speak german i don't know anything and so i went to germany and uh, well actually i'll take that back I mean, it was after i went to germany i don't remember 79, because like we talked, like you talk about in the movie, Van Halen got signed. Right. So, okay, this is it, man. They're the they're, they're, they're first LA band, so Quiet Riot and Smile and, and Snow and, and Doc, and we're all going to get this record deal. Right. Nope. All of a sudden, the Plimsolls and all that kind of, and then there was Black Flag when Keith Morris was still singing with them, and there was sure. cra and then there was the hardcore crazy bands like the Mentors right. with Le Duce, you know, with uh, El Duce. Poor guy jumped in front of a train. They yeah. say, I'm not sure, I think he was <laughs> murdered myself. But yeah. all that was going on, so I'm like, okay, you got punk. And so I went to, Ger I said, well, there's nothing going on here. And then some people said, but you know, Rock's huge, Saxon and Judas Priest right. and Scorpion, th this is going on in Germany. Mm. And I went, well, that's all the bands I love. Right. So I went to Germany and did like 30 shows, Juan Crucy on bass, we were a three piece. I played lead guitar, rhythm, and that's vocals. Right. Juan sang. Greg Peck was on drums, we were a three piece, and did that tour and came back, still nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I had played many, many shows with George Lynch and uh, Mick Brown. They were in a band called The Boys. Right. Now that and was right after Exeter, right? That you no, before. The, oh, yeah, well, they were called The Boys when we were all playing the strip. Right. Van Halen, The Boys, The Quiet Riot. I have a flyer of Randy when he joined Ozzy, and he did his last two nights mm -hmm. with Quiet Riot. Right. And it was Van Halen, Quiet Riot, Dawkins. Wow. Or was it Airborne? Don't know. Mm -hmm. But we played the Star with two nights sold out. And, uh, and I played these shows with George. And I said, man, that guy's a, he's probably the heir to the throne of the next Eddie Van Halen. Absolutely. And Mick was a great drummer and singer. So when I came back in Germany, I said, guys, I, have, I'm, I got this, I think I'm going to record deal. You know, I did this demo in Germany. That was the deal. Mm -hmm. You sing in the Scorpions album, I'll let you use the studio right. for five days full-blown, mm. free, but I had no band. Right. So I had Bobby Blotzer, who was over there, I got him a gig in a band called Big Forget. He was in at the theater studio that, yeah. recording in Big Forget, and Juan's brother, Tom Crucier. Right. So they were there. I said, guys, I got these songs, and I'm gonna, I need to have no band. Let's just do a quick demo, Bobby and Tom played, and there's a the song Paris is Burning, which became a very famous for Doc, and it wasn't my song. It was Exciter. It was, yeah. it was, it was actually the boys. Oh, the boys, okay. And I called George or Mick, and I said, hey, you know, um, you guys don't play that song anymore, I heard. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, man, you know, that, that kind of music's done. We're now called Exciter. <laughs> and I went, and, and we have a, and we got rid of the singer, who's really a lot like David Lee Roth. Right. And we have a girl. I said, wait a minute, you have a female vocalist? Mm -hmm. Wow, I, okay. And so I came back to L.A., and so they said, yeah, you, George said, you can do the song. We're done with Paris. So I just rewrote the lyrics. That's mm -hmm. all. They went kind of popping new wave at that time. It was, it was weird because I saw George. He had super long hair and Mick right. had super long hair. And they all had long hair and they wore like platform boots. And they were, they were full on across being Snow and Van Halen. And when I came back to L.A. from Germany, they had cut their hair off and they had pointy boots and shark skin jackets and this chick. And George wasn't playing solos. Right. And they were playing like kind of plimsolls kind of songs. And I was like what are you doing? Mm -hmm. 
and they're like, this is it. This is what's the new, the next thing. And that's, unfortunately for George, he always was looking for the next thing. Right. If you look at the first Dawkins album, our first covers on, you know, he did the, when Kajagoo got big, George immediately did the, the top of his head blonde and <laughs> the bottom, you got the Kajagoo two-tone hair. And that's just, George was kind of like that. And I said, well, I, I don't dig this music at all. So if you guys want to, I got a record deal and I got a manager and I might have the Blue Oyster Cult tour. You guys want to do it? So that's when they joined the band and went to Germany. And I said, throw away the, the new age and the new way, where the hell this stuff is. I think this is a fad. It's going to go away. Right. I'm going to stick to my guns and just do what I do. Right. That was smart. We're going to get all into that because this is something that a lot of people don't know about this era. No. It's before MTV, before that. We're going to take a short break. We're going to get all into that. He's going to talk about... Uh, the early scene, as he does in the new movie Inside Metal, The Pioneers of L.A. Well, I, try to, well, I try to chew off my ABS glue. Oh, <laughs> there you go. We'll be back. T-Radio V. The rock goes down. You can feel it all around you. Like the races the Hi, I'm Sheriff John Bennell. You're watching T-Radio. Radio and TV? What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was perfect. You know, Why are you asking me to do this after now. 12 drinks? <laughs> hey, my fellow thoughters out there. I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say, but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a thought, starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio in TV. All right, I'm Louis Lombardi. And I'm James Gutierrez. Bringing you Celebrity Bookie every Thursday, starting September 4th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Every NFL game picked by this man right here. Yep, we're going to make you rich. And fantasy stuff by me. Fantasy stuff by him. Fantasy football stuff. On where? On... For radio. I think that's TV radio. No, it's T, T, <laughs> it's radio, T radio V. T radio V on radio dot com. TV. T dot radio com. V dot com, I think, is what they want. Tune in. Radio and TV on the internet. The concept. <laughs> it's the f bit. T radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, we're back here at the uh, Inside Metal show on T Radio V. I got my guest, Mr. Don Dawkins. How you doing, Don? He's trying to get the glue off his uh, fingers. There, he's not, he's not actually sucking his thumb. No, ladies and gentlemen. I just, you know, <laughs> trying to get that fish palm pump going. Mm. At ABS, I, I should have known better to wear gloves because this stuff don't come off, man. Mm. It's going to be on there for like years but it's okay i got my fish pond going so well that's cool that's cool you know before we get into the inside metal thing i, I, I remember you were saying you were going to eat some chicken soup at the rainbow but now i remember Dawkins hates chicken isn't that right at least according to oh, virus. <laughs> the commercial yeah for those that don't know what i'm talking about i think we got the commercial queued up it's a great you know? commercial i love that commercial do we have it there there we go <laughs> Imagine this chicken is your hard drive, and the 80s metal band Dokken is a computer virus. Dokken does not like chicken and wants to destroy it. The chicken, not knowing Dokken's intentions, doesn't really have any feelings either way. Now you have a choice. Would you like to allow Dokken to have its way with your chicken, unleashing a wrath the likes of which the chicken has never seen? Or would you like to deny it? Whoa, take it easy, bro. <laughs> this ain't over. Protect your chicken from docking. Deny <laughs> digital dangers with Norton Internet Security 2011. Oh, that's so funny. You There's... have a choice. Would you like to allow docking to have its way with your chicken, unleashing a wrath the likes All of All right, it? there you go, man. There's four versions. You're the one he pulls out a switchblade. Right. And that's if you, you know, uh, allow, you deny, uh, deny. Oh, deny, right. And then if you allow, it cuts to us and we're eating chicken. Oh, okay. And I got these drums. That one. Yeah, if you say allow yeah. you know, on the, one of the versions, then all of a sudden it cuts to us and we got the and we're like, mmm, 
mm, yeah, I'm good. And I got a chicken leg. And <laughs> the funny thing, that, that place where it was filmed is uh, the largest wooden structure in the United States wow. that was built in World War II to hold four blimps because, you know, we people believed that the Japanese were going to invade, you know, L.A. Right. And so they had blimps in the air all the time, blimps, you know, looking for planes coming to Long Beach because that's where we made all our ships. Sure. Long Beach and San Diego. And the truth was, a little quick little trivia off of rock and roll, but that the original thing when they went to Pearl Harbor was they were going to continue mm. past Pearl Harbor and go to really America and go to California and bomb our shipyards, right. which would have screwed us. We would have been screwed. But the carriers were out, and they said, well, where's all the aircraft carriers? They're not in the harbor like we're supposed to. So they were afraid that the aircraft carriers were in Long Beach, so the guy said, you know what, we're just going to do Pearl Harbor, because if we go to Long Beach, they got all these planes, if they got the aircraft carriers, then we'll get creamed. Right. But they didn't. The aircraft carriers were just out doing maneuvers. So they put all these blimps in the air, so they built this huge structure. That structure's been used on Nissan commercials, mm -hmm. movie sets. Uh, it's a ginormous and I thought, why are we in here? Because, you know, it's just us standing there and just a camera 10 feet back. And I thought, do we really need these a gazillion foot hangar? Right. But the director wanted this kind of incredibly over the top, right. you know, depth of field like thing. Like a hangar times 10, yeah. And when he asked me to do it, he says, uh, it was a friend of mine, Ryan, he goes, uh, ever, and he goes, uh, hey, you know, you know, he was actually staying at my house, my Beverly Hills house up in Benedict. Mm. And I had a guest house, and he says, I'm doing this commercial, and the band, one of the bands pulled out, and you want to do a, a commercial? I said, yeah, I'll do a commercial. And he's like, it's, it'll be you with a chick. And I went, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not doing the, uh, that commercial. Remember, they used to do the, the, there was this band, Danger Kitty, and they ended up at a bar yeah, mitzvah. Oh, yeah, yeah, which ended up being Steel Panther. I right, believe, yeah. Steel Panther doing the Danger Kitty, and it's right. a bar mitzvah. And I said, commercial. I'm not going to punk myself right. for Visa, but they got paid yeah. great money. So, and then he told me how much he'd pay me, and I went, Really? He goes, well, it's, it's dude, it's, anti, it's Norton Antivirus. I said, for that kind of money, I'll wear a chicken suit. I will be the chicken. I will flap my wings, and I will cluck for the, it was like really crazy amount of money they paid us, just to stand there and go, right. deny, allow. And then we did the next version where we cut to eating the chicken, mm -hmm. and then we, we did a, four versions, and he did four commercials in one day, and then he had... Uh, the guy that was on Baywatch. Right. Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. He came in next. And his thing was with, like, he was blowing his hair and the hair dryer attacked. And then they had a guy from the USC, this big guy, you know, with his teeth and a little worm, you know, attacks him and he laser beams him and his arm falls off. So they did, like, all the commercials in one day. Wow. But the money we made was great. And then, and then they put it out on, posted on television and they decided not to and it went to YouTube and got, like, it's up to like I don't know, three million hits or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. That. That's cool, but it's a fun. It's a fun. Yeah, thing. it's a great commercial. So now you're a bona fide actor. What about the, any <laughs> yeah. other? Uh, that that that's that? Sean, not me. Sean. Uh, well, the yeah, actor. that's right. His base for Sean in Sons of Anarchy. Of yeah, course. Sons of Anarchy, and he just left the group actually and uh, doing a solo album. He played with us for five years. That's right. I heard Mark Bowles as Mark ba Bowles. And I didn't realize he was uh, a great that great a bass the player. The trip to play. Well, Mark is a fantastic singer. He's a great singer. Did all the Ingbe Malmsteen albums. Sure. Done Ring of Fire solo albums. All, a lot of Japanese bands. He's got a super high range. Yeah. And I said, and he did some background vocals on Broken Bones. And I was saying, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm thinking Sean's kind of wandering off this other direction. We might need another you know, bass player because Sean's got a lot of things. He's acting and he's doing stuff and he's got all these other things he's doing and he goes why well, play bass and i said i thought you were just the lead singer he goes well no i was in ted nugent right and i went that's right you were you were in ted nugent mm -hmm. he goes yeah i was in ted nugent call ted you know because mick was on front yeah and ted goes yeah mark played bass. i said well is he good and he goes yeah he's good you know check him out <laughs> so he, he took the bass and he learned a couple of Dawkins songs and then i already knew he's a great singer sure. and he's a lead singer so i thought why would a lead singer want to be a bass player right but the truth is jeff pilson is a lead singer yeah he's a great singer. he's not a back around singer. jeff was a lead singer i mean i'm sure he's happy in foreigner but the truth is when we got him in docking we had landed the tour to go out booster cold and juan said I, I really can't deal with all this kind of uh, conflict with you and george you guys you, you know you guys only been together three months and we're already arguing and we went to germany even back then you were Oh, it's, it's day one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, George thought, look, I'll do this docking album. You pay me a couple grand, get some money, go home, and go back to doing Exciter. Right. But the truth was, I said, but 
but George, you're living in the back of a Pinnell station wagon, and that's the truth. It was a, they had an apartment, got kicked out, and I came home, and they he'd put curtains on it, and he was kind of living there, and Mick was bumming at some guy's couch, and they really they were driving uh, trucks for Gallo wine, right. delivering Gallo wine. Yes. And I said, well, wouldn't you rather just like go play than deliver Gallo wine? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. Right. So that, I got in the band, but George and I never got along because he's a leader, alpha, and I was an alpha. And I said, but it, it is called Doc, and, and it's my band, and you're a great guitar player, but it's going to be, you know, you, the first tour we did, I still played guitar. Right. I played guitar the whole tour, Blois de Colt. I played guitar through the whole I remember tour. My beautiful guitar. Les Paul that got stolen. It was only one, two I've ever made. It was, they made two custom black Les Pauls for Peter Green with a white cream wow. face. And I had one. I think we got a picture of that guitar, actually. Oh, I want to throw up the picture. Can you here? find it for me? Let, let's, uh, I want that guitar back. It's one of a kind. There it is. There you go. And so what I did. Now that's at, Airborne, right? That's Airborne days. And then I took the, the tape, kind of like an Eddie Van Halen thing, and made my little Norwegian flag, because I'm Norwegian. Right. So that guitar, unfortunately, uh, got stolen out of my house with two one of Eddie Van Halen's heads that he'd had a Jose Mod done to it. Right. Old, old small letter Marshall. I took my Marshall and took the guitar and, and, I'm, and I thought it'll We've see the light of day. We've got some other photos here too. Let's, I think we got maybe have another picture there. Is there more? Uh, I thought that guitar. Oh, there, there oh, you look are at that. again. That's, that's before the tape was on it. That was one of your first uh, very early shows, huh? With this is born. very early so I can tell from the glammy kind of silk shirt with my my scarf tied around my neck and I, and I decided to get the Peter Frampton perm, right? And I'm like, and that was a disaster. You look like Frampton. I know. Everybody goes, you look like Dawkins Frampton. Dawkins comes alive. It does, and, and I love that Paul. <laughs> and they and they said, oh yeah, that white Paul. I said, no, it's not white. It's black. It's just, it says no, cream face. And they go, there's no such thing. I actually called Gibson to try to hunt down the serial numbers. It went on eBay or somebody sold it, so I could get it back. And it's been 15 Let's years. Show some of the other pictures we got uh, here. That's that way explain. back. That, that's more of what about 83, 84? Yeah, 83, 84. Yeah, 83, 84. That was when we did. Uh, I don't know. Actually, well, it's probably later, that's right? actually later. Well, that's actually taken when we were playing at the uh, Palladium and we were filming Alone Again. Oh, okay. So that was, cool. we'd already had a couple of platinum albums under our belt. And uh, that was in our torn t shirt phase at Rat and everybody sure. had started. And you buy a t shirt and you tear it up. And, yeah. and everybody was doing that. And that was kind of stupid for us yeah. to try to follow. Here's suit. an old one here. Whoa, I've never seen that. That's with Gary Holland from Great White and Greg, Greg Leon. Leon. And there's me. Look how young I look. And who's the other guy? Is that Greg Packer? Uh, no, his name was Gary Link on the right. Okay, wow. He was a bass player we got yeah. at the last minute to do my second tour of Germany because uh, Juan was doing something. Greg Peckin went somewhere else. So I got, and that's also kind of the reason I hooked up with um, Great White because Gary Holland went from Dawkins to Great White. Sure. And then Gre Gary Link I found, and we went to Germany. As you see there, that's where he throw just going through customs. Right. And uh, I like that jacket I'm wearing. Obviously, we're all wearing furry <laughs> jackets, which means it must have been freezing freaking cold. Yeah. So I got Greg Leon on board, because he was a great singer, great guitar player. Absolutely. And that was the second, kind of a second incarnation of Dawkins. Right. Let's yeah. see, we got another pair. There's an old. Uh, that's the original, original, uh, original, 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 original lineup. That's me. Greg Peck on the right, right, and that guy's name was Greg, jeez, uh, I don't remember, Greg uh, something. So that was right from Airborne to Dokken when you- This was the very first single I ever, this was 1977 before Germany. Okay. This is a 45. Oh, wow. And the uh, guitar player from, from, uh, from uh, Paul and the Raiders. Okay, yeah, you uh, talk about him in the movie. Drake, Drake Levin. Right. Saw me. I came into his music store all the time. I'd be playing. I was and I was pretty good. Then I could shred and play a lot of Blackmore stuff. And he said, "You're a good guitar player. You know, you should go in the studio and cut a cut a demo." And I said, "I, I don't know." So mm -hmm. we should go in. I said, "Okay." And he, so he produced me. Drake um, produced it. And then this was a bootleg. Yeah, the German bootleg, right? Of back this album sold over half a million copies. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a tape we did live. Michael Wagner recorded it right. in Hamburg, and the guy stole the masters. Yeah. And. I tried to sue and tried to stop them, and the guy said, you know, have at it. And, and they said, you know, I'll be flying lawyers to Germany. And I said, you know, it's just a live recording. It's no big deal. And I remember seeing happen. that on import. A friend of mine Oh, man, that. everybody and their yeah. mother's got that and record. That, that was the first I heard about Dawkins, because I kind of remember you. Did you do something on Herman Rarebill's Nip in the Bud or one of uh, those? Herman the German. Herman the German. Herman the yeah. German, I sang. And I always thought you were a German guy because of the, the background you the had. Scorpions and, then, and right. Herman. When Herman, after he met me in Germany, 
you wanted to do a solo album, and I said, okay, so I sang all the vocals. Right. But then my manager said, y you're under contract with Electra. You can't sing mm -hmm. all the vocals. So what did you sign with Electra then, with Dawkins? I sang with Electra in 82, okay. when, I, when Cliff Bernstein, who became the, 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 the most biggest manager, biggest manager in the world, yeah. he's the, him and Peter Mensch, sure. and they only had one man. Right. They had Def Leppard. And right. it hadn't come out yet. And he goes, hey, let me play these roughs. And I went, mm. wow. He goes, this album's going to be big. And I said, that album's going to be huge. Mm. And he said, I want to manage Dawkin. And I said, well, I don't have a band. Mm. It was just Mick and I. We, got, we became roommates. George, right. George was in England auditioning for Ozzy. That's right. That's and right. wanted left to go play with Rat. Right. So I had a drummer and me. Right. We're going to talk all about that. We're going to take a little break here on the Inside Metal Show at T Radio V. We'll be back with Don Dawkin, talking about the airborne days, talking about all the early days of the uh, old L.A. Sunset Strip when we come back. Hey, what's up? I am Scott. And I am Ken. We are not the Chemical Brothers, but we are, <laughs> we are the Crystal Method. And you are watching T Radio V. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Go ahead. What's up, everybody? Can I beat him in public or no? This is inappropriate. Guys, this is like the Grammy edition. Don't mess it up. <laughs> is it on? It's cheap, but... Let me start one more time on that one. East. So your, your head really we... isn't as little as it looks. It's funny, because it looks little. Next, we got, got, uh, how, uh, we got... Uh, oh. He actually... That wasn't even a, a pull shot. He hit me right in the... No. Did you feel the softy it's tissue of my... Okay, are you rolling? Yes, it's got yes. to be... It's so got to be vampire yeah. I love it that I'm in costume. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm not. <laughs> Adventure, avalanche, avenger. I'm real. Sorry. I forgot who I was for a second. <laughs> We're one take ponies. Is that it? Yeah, you're done. Give me a hug. I'm sorry, I was a little. You are it's <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob Nelbandian, and be sure to watch my show Inside Metal, which airs live every Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T Radio V. I'm gonna be bringing in the greatest heavy metal artist live right here in the studio. Once again, every week at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Tuesday, right here at tradiov.com, radio in TV. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, we are back here at the Inside Metal Show right here on T Radio V. Love this lead here. Oh, uh, Lynch is. I mean, Lynch was just. During that album, he was on fire. Yeah. He was just. He was in his prime. Mm. <laughs> no, here, quick. Yeah. Oh, so listen to that. He's jumping back and forth from the neck, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, he's yeah, unbelievable. He's a shredder. Yeah, absolutely. John Levin, quite the shredder, too. Cool. Man. John Levin and every goes, I have to laugh when, you know, sometimes he'll give his card out and it says, you know, John Levin, attorney of law. Yeah. And, and people always say, they go, are you a real attorney? I'm not sure what that, I you know, what did you get? You know, Are got, any attorneys for real? Well, I think they meant, like, did you get it off the internet? You know, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, what's the matter, you, university? Right, you know, right. Like these fake, you know, documents. And, sure. and I always, he's really shy about being an attorney. I was like, uh, the guy graduated cum laude, you know, right. from Loyola. I mean, the guy is, like, super smart. And, he, but he did entertainment. Mm. That's how I met John, through Jeff. And, and I was doing demos one day. And John, in, in the 80s, was in uh, Warlock. Oh, okay, yeah. He was yeah, a lead guitar player for man. Warlock. Okay. For he had huge air right. right down here. And then he came out of the studio and he had a suit and tie. He came from court and he had his suit on and he had shaved his head really short, and, you know, and he looked like a lawyer. And he right. came in and he said, if I would have known I was coming down to play solos for Doc and I would not have come. 
Right. He just thought Jeff said, come down, I'm in the studio, and I'm just doing some demo. He didn't know it was for me. Oh, yeah. And I came in, and I said, okay, here's a song. I played it. I go, here, it's in E. And then, okay, and, and the lead section is in B, go. And he goes, what? I go, just go, man. Just, just go. Play. He goes, just go. I go, just go. <laughs> just start playing. And he went, uh, okay. And he goes, I haven't played in a couple of years. You know, I'm an attorney. I, I haven't played since Dora Pesh. I mean, it's been like years. And I went, just go. That and I, amazing. And I went, you haven't played in years, and you play like that. Mm -hmm. Holy! And I said, who's your favorite guitar player? George Lynch. You sound like George. You have his chops. He does. He goes, I know every solo, every, every, when he was in high school, he used to come to see Dawkins. Right. So, because he's like 10 years younger than me. So he was the perfect guy. Perfect to join the band. He's been in the band over 10 years now. Well, you got so much things going on right now. I know you got an upcoming tour yep. that you're working on. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it comes together, I got a call from the agent, and they're trying to put this thing called the Royal Flush Tour in the summer. It's uh, mm -hmm. Ace Frehley, Dawkins, Lita Ford, Jack Russell's Great White, and that's it, I think. Awesome. Made one of the band. I think the first time I saw you was at the Country Club with Lita Ford. Is yep. that right? A that long was, time ago. That was one of your first shows in L.A., I remember. One of the very, very first shows. Were you shows. signed then? Because it seemed like, boom, after that, it was, you know, you guys got, We were signed. Yeah. But it was like, I don't think the album came out yet. Right. We just, they... That's right. But I knew you from Germany. That's why I thought it was a German band. Oh, For Dawkins years, yeah. Dokken. Oh, you yeah. I, I, People walk <laughs> me and go, Guten uh, Tag. I'm like... Hello. He gets. Was ist los? I go, in schön. And then that means everything's fine. They're like, what's up? What's going on? I go, fine. And then they start going, I go, dude, I'm from California. I live in the Venice High School. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That's funny. But uh, yeah, it's Norwegian name. My mm -hmm. parents, it goes back to Oslo days, and they live all come from Oslo. Mm -hmm. So that was that. But everybody had the connection to the Scorps, and I did two tours in Germany, and so they assumed we were a German band. And the album came out in Germany first. Yeah, wow. Well, you know, when Breaking the Chains came out, uh, George wasn't in the band. Right. No, everybody left after the album, and they weren't, it wasn't a band. So the first Breaking the Chains album came out. Was, was that called, with Greg Leon? No, no. The first one with Lynch and, and, and Mick. Right, okay. And uh, one was called Dawn Docking. Right. And it was a solo album. Right. And it had a picture of me in the cover, Chained Up. Mm. And originally it was going to be a picture of me and Juan, and then Juan left. And then when we got the deal in America, I said, well, what do we do now? The album's doing really well in Europe. And they said, well, let's make it a, just drop Dawn mm. and just call it Dawkin. And I went, mm. okay. It went from a solo album to a band. Wow. When George and Mick committed, and I said, I have Cliff Bernstein, he's like a really great manager, sure. and he said, we can have the Blue Oyster Cult tour if we can stop arguing for five minutes. Right. And we did, and we stopped arguing for four minutes, and that was it, and that was then and the you had some great started. bands. I mean, I remember when you signed with Geffen, you had that whole new band, which was like a super group. John I, Norum and uh, Peter, Baltus. Peter Baltus from Accept. I mean, come on. Pil great. Billy White, which was like a was Amazing like an Austin. Player, yeah. yeah, he and was Mickey an D on drums. Mickey D from, from King Diamond, who's now been in Motorhead. Motorhead he yeah. from after Doc, he went to Motorhead, been ever since. And, and I thought then it was you know the new Doc. Ever was this is like a super excited. group and super new group, label and all the new. best musicians I could find. Absolutely. The bass player from you know from Accept. Sure, man. And they're like. And we went on tour and we sold out everywhere and we went to Japan and sold out and everybody goes, this band is the bomb. And then Geffen yeah. pulled the plug and said, I just sold Geffen to MCA Records. And I went, yeah. wait, you're leaving the Warner Brothers group? So what happens to my record? You're gonna be on MCA? And I went, well, no offense to MCA, but doesn't everybody call that the Musician Cemetery of America? That's what it was back in the 80s, especially for rock bands. We got about two minutes left. Talk right. real quick about your, uh, 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 you got a reality show coming out. Well, too, we'll right? see, I mean, my uh, better half, uh, Lady E, um, she got approached to do her, like one of those, you know, Housewives of Florida. Oh, right. And they wanted her to be in it because she's not a, as they say, most of the women in those shows either married well or divorced well. Right. But she's a self-made woman. She's an heiress. But she's also a Zen Buddhist priest. Wow. And they said, she's a Zen Buddhist priest? I said, yeah, she was in a Zen Buddhist monastery for 25 years, and she's a, still a practicing Zen Buddhist. And she's not a monk. She's up, like, right. several levels wow. into a priest. Her uh, patriarch, Manyak, uh, passed away, and then she left the monastery. So here they said, well, wait a minute. You got a rock star, and you're an E, and she's a Buddhist monk? Hmm. And I go, uh, yeah. No, she's not a monk. She's a priest. That's different. And you know, there's pictures, and she's got pictures of her with the Dalai Lama, and, the da, wow. and she's got her robes on. She had the shaved bald head, and 
and I think, oh, your, your girlfriend's got a shaved bald head. And I, so she left the monastery, and she asked to be released from the monastery, and she t grow, they let her grow her hair out, right. and she still, and now she's, she went into like uh, helping like firemen, police, mm -hmm. people in stressful jobs. She teaches meditation to try to handle stress had a, in a boot, not, she's not pushing Buddhism a way of life, right, say, right. but as how to live, be calm mm -hmm. and stressed in meditation. So we are our dichotomy. So, and, uh, so several people came to us and approached us, produced said, monk, priest, right. and rock star. This is very strange. We'd like to do That's a show. a great show. I could definitely see something there. And she wouldn't want to do it. She's very shy, but she said, but if I can promote my, uh, my beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, as, as that will help. So we can do the side. We're here. It's already the end of the show. I could go on like three hours with this guy. Easy. He, he didn't even get into the old stories. You're I got a ton of gonna, stories. You're going to have to watch the DVD for that. So that, <laughs> Go yeah. out to the theaters. It starts tomorrow in theaters. Uh, go to metalrockfilms.com. Get a listing of all the theaters playing all over the nation. Don Dawkin, my guest. Check out his Thanks new band, uh, uh, Dawkin.com, right? They could go. Uh, Dawkin Central, yeah. Dawkin.net, Dawkin Dawkin whatever. I don't know. There's all kinds of sites. There you go. Go online. Check it out. Check out his. He's going to be touring real soon. you got a new record coming out, too. Yep, right in the middle of it. All sorts of great stuff. Still alive and doing great. Don Dawkin, thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. T-Radio V, Inside Metal. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio and TV.